Hey there hunters, Dan Murray here with another wiper motor video, this time about controlling wiper motors. Now why is control so important? Well for the first part of this video I'm going to show you one of the reasons I love wiper motors so much. They are powerful. How powerful? Well, take a look and do not try this at home. For this demonstration I'm using a 3 8 inch piece of wood doweling. If it looks fairly thick, well, it is, and is probably even thicker than the bone in one of your fingers. However, for this demonstration, I'm laying it across these two pieces of 2x4 to support it, and I'm going to show you just how strong a wiper motor is. And now in slow motion. Welcome to the wonderful world of wiper motor control and I'd like to introduce you to my wiper motor demo board. I put this together so I could actually try out different things with wiper motors and I have something consistent to work with. Although this is the cheapest wiper motor I could find to put on here because it was basically expendable. One thing I like to use this for is just testing things out and it's also available to rent for kids parties. Let's check out the components. I have a power supply and of course the power cord. I added a power switch, two terminal blocks, one for the 12 volt side and one for ground, a switch box that allows me to turn the power to the relays on and off as well as to control forward and reverse, and two control relays which I'll go into more detail about later. But first things first, let's turn on the power. When we activate the power switch, you'll actually hear a small relay inside the power supply click into place. That lets you know for sure that the power supply is activated. Now that we have some power, let's throw this on-off switch. When I do, it applies power to the first relay, and that connects current through to the motor, and the motor starts running. When I flip the switch to the off position, the relay drops out, and the motor stops, but not instantaneously. As you can see, the motor takes more than a quarter revolution to stop when the power is removed. Depending on what you're moving, that may not be adequate. In fact, it could present a danger. That's why control of the motor is so important. For those of you who have seen our robot skeleton, Mr. Bones, you probably have noticed that we've been able to control his arm rather well and have it stop exactly where we want it. If there was no way of controlling the motor, it would continue moving, just like the demo, and we'd have a lot of problems with it bashing itself around and thrashing things to pieces. Fortunately, there is a way to actually apply the brakes to a wiper motor. I'll show you how. But first, a quick electronics lesson. For those of you who have seen my other videos, I have often talked about relays and how they work and how you should work with them. A relay is basically a coil of wire, an electromagnet. When you put a current through it, the coil becomes magnetized and it activates the internal switch in the relay. However, if you recall, when you take the power away, the magnetic field collapses and it actually induces a current, which in the relay's case we have to short out with a diode. So what does this have to do with a motor? Well, what is a motor? It's basically a whole bunch of coils of wire, except that some of those coils of wire are designed to spin around. That's what makes the motor move. So we can take advantage of this and use the motor's electrical generating properties as a brake. How does that work? In the case of a motor, when we apply power, the motor turns. That's kind of what its job is. However, with a motor, when we take the power off, the collapsing magnetic fields generate an electrical current as well, but in the opposite direction to which we applied it. So now, if we short the ends of the motor out, what happens to that power? It gets jolted back into the motor in reverse, and the motor basically comes to a screeching halt almost instantaneously. So how do we pull off this little bit of trickery? Surprise, we use a relay. The relay I've chosen to control the power of the motor was specifically chosen because it was a double pole, double throw relay. In other words, there's two sets of contacts. One where the relay is left alone and it's normally closed, and the other are normally open and only connect when the relay is activated. So that's how I drive power into the motor, with the normally open contacts. Those normally closed contacts, I short them together so that when the relay drops out, the motor is shorted out and it acts like a brake. It works perfectly. 
It's virtually impossible to see what's happening in real time, but if we slow things down, you get a better idea of what's going on. When the relay first throws, nothing happens until the normally open set of contacts connects and electricity is introduced into the motor, and naturally the motor starts to spin. The tricky part comes at the end when the relay drops out. As soon as the relay contacts open, no more electricity is introduced into the motor, and the only thing that keeps the motor going is its own momentum. At that point, it's becoming a generator. Once the connection is made on the opposite side, the normally closed contacts, the motor's output is shorted back into itself and it immediately tries to drive the motor in the opposite direction, effectively stopping it in its tracks. This video shows exaggerated motion. In real time, the switching time between when a relay moves from one set of contacts to the others is very, very short, only in the order of a few milliseconds, and so the motor hardly has any time to coast at all. That's why it appears to stop almost instantaneously. Now some of you may be looking at this and saying to yourself, Hey Dan, relays are so old school. Why don't we get up to date and use something like an Arduino controller and an H-Bridge and we can write some code and we can make this thing do all of that stuff and use some digital technology. And you know what? You're right. However, I do like the old school approach for another reason. Safety. In the event of a power failure, your Arduino is useless. In the event of a power failure with a relay, it does the exact thing I want it to do. Stop the motor dead. So we can stop and start the motor with no problem, but what about if we want to change its direction? As it turns out, that's no problem either. So how do we do that? Simple. We use another relay. I use the second switch and relay for controlling direction. When I throw the switch, the relay fires and the motor reverses direction. When I throw the switch the other way, the relay drops out and the motor returns to its forward direction again. So what sort of electronic wizardry is going on in there this time? Well, as it turns out, if you follow the poles of the battery through this mess, you'll see that the plus and minus ends line up with the motor like this. When you reverse direction by flipping the relay, now the poles are reversed, so naturally the motor reverses direction as well. When you let the relay drop back the other way, the poles are put back to the original orientation and the motor goes back to its forward direction again. Now that we can stop, start, and change direction, we can combine all of those to do pretty much anything we want. But what if we want to figure out when something attached to our motor has reached a, a limit or a certain position? Well, for that, I like to use something called a micro switch. Now, the term micros makes it sound like it's kind of small, and I used to try small ones, but I found out that after mulching about a half a dozen of them, I needed something that was a little more robust. Why? Because that motor doesn't stop instantly, and so whatever switch you use has to be able to take a little bit of abuse. So that's why I use these. Yeah, they're huge, they cost a little more, but they'll take whatever abuse you can throw at them. In fact, these exact same switches are used in Mr. Bones' arm. I have them arranged so that at the top and bottom end of the arm's throw, a switch will make contact and will stop the arm from going any further. For the last part of this video, we'll warn you in advance. There is highly technical content. If you're not comfortable with electrical diagrams, I'd stop now. Okay, you've been warned. So for the purposes of this exercise, this schematic diagram shows a complete controller circuit for controlling a wiper motor to move an arm in a forward and reverse direction with the limit switches at each end. We'll assume we've just finished a cycle and have run things in reverse back to a starting position. Whatever is on the arm has now hit the reverse limiting switch, triggering it and stopping everything, so we can now begin the whole process again. The first thing that has to happen is we activate the little purple switch down at the bottom there. You'll notice it's a single pole double throw switch and that is a requirement to make this operate properly. It could be either a switch or another relay, it doesn't really matter. When it's activated into the down position, now things start to happen. First of all, you'll notice that the relay that controls direction, the blue one, has dropped out so that the current is going to be sent through in what we will call the forward direction. The other relay, the orange one at the top, is still dropped out and is shorting the motor so that nothing's happening, yet. But remember, these relays act fast, so in a split second, that top orange relay throws and the motor starts to turn in the forward direction. Now, whatever is on that arm will leave the reverse limit switch because things are now moving. 
From here on in, things will continue to move until something changes. Either we change the position of the purple switch, or something hits a limit switch. In this case, we'll let everything run until whatever's on the arm now reaches the far end of its forward limit and hits the forward limit switch. At this point, the circuit to the orange relay is broken, so the relay will drop out, shorting the motor, and effectively breaking it. We could leave everything in this position for as long as we want, and the motor will just stay there. However, at some point we'll want things to come back to the beginning again, so we'll throw the purple switch the other direction and let things run in reverse. You can see that not only does the orange motor controller relay activate, but the blue directional one does too. So the motor starts to run, but in reverse. Now that things are running in reverse, whatever is on the arm will leave the forward limit switch, and things can run like this indefinitely, but in reverse. Things can now run in reverse until whatever's on the arm hits the reverse limit switch. Once again, the circuit to the motor control relay is broken, the relay drops out, and the motor stops. We've completed an entire cycle 